Welcome to the Kaiju Podcast. I'm Ralph. I'm Jorge. Today we're talking about Mighty Joe Young. 1998. Right. Um, Archeo Pictures, Disney Pictures. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I forgot the 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 newish Archeo logo was like kind of weird to see. Is it? Was it just for show? Like in color and stuff. That's what I was wondering. If it was just like kind of like in tribute. I think so. I think so. Um, so this is a loose remake of the the last one. I don't even. I don't remember the date on the last one. Nineteen forty nine or nineteen something like that. Is that too early? I, um, I, already, uh, I meant to jot it down. Uh, and I, I didn't. didn't. I don't know. I'm, I know I'm the year guy on our little thing. <laughs> I, I, I dropped. My <laughs> blindsided you on that one. But uh, the... 1949. That's correct. Oh wow! So some stuff is sticking in my brain. Mm, that's, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um. It it uh. It's very very loosely based on that. There's a Jill Young and a Joe Young, and a giant eight. Yes. And I think that's where it stops. The orphanage has been replaced by a Ferris wheel. Right. Um, this uh, you said you'd seen this movie and you said it was bad. Um, or not good or not I, the greatest. I mean, it's 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 yeah, it's 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 not great. It's like it's kind of for kids. Um, I I I, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's when I saw it. I wouldn't say I didn't like it. Just because I'm a very easy sell when it comes to a big gorilla movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I hadn't seen uh, it, it before, and I think it's bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm not it's, saying it's good. Yeah, it's it's funny. I like. There's a lot of things to like about it. You know, well, the Disney logo comes up at the beginning because I had forgotten this was a Disney movie. I didn't know it at all. And, I, and that's how I found it was. I was like, oh, Disney. And when you come into it going, this is a Disney movie, and you start kind of like grouping it with other Disney movies that were live action, like all those ridiculous Disney movies from like yeah. the 80s and stuff that, mm-hmm. or, or even before that used to play on TV and all that stuff. How you going, all right. Because it's, it's, it's pretty kind of. A lot of it is light fluff right. kind of stuff. It doesn't get too uh, it's kind of too cliche. deep in any direction. Yeah, and yeah, it's very on the nose in a yeah. lot of parts. I guess I, I didn't. Even but a guy see... does get his thumb and forefinger bitten off, <laughs> and he says it. It bit off my thumb and trigger finger. <laughs> oh, by the way, so this movie is directed by Ron <laughs> Underwood. Yes, I looked him up. Who directed Tremors, which I haven't seen. And it's something that we've been kind of tossing about, talk, tossing back and forth as a possibility for right. this show. Right. He's also directed multiple episodes of Hawaii Five O. Oh, okay. Including this one, oh, no. where it was a Halloween episode. Okay. And I had this gag where I pretend I got my finger cut off when we're carving oh. pumpkins. Oh no! Okay. And we the um, the the scene. Uh, one of the people in the scene is the kid who plays uh, Scott Conn's kid in it, okay. and um, he wasn't ready for oh no um, me getting my finger lopped off gag uh-huh. with the blood coming out of it. It got kind of intense for him, and uh, and it got real. It started getting real, <laughs> you know, just like trying to get through the scene, knowing this kid is a little traumatized, and right. And and there's uh, at one point when they just kind of had the kid there, and he's not even looking, and he's just kind of like, kind of like almost like crying to himself. And I'm just, I, they just need me to rec- do my lines as if I'm talking to him, and he's responding to me just to kind of get through it. Oh man, man! And but, but like that, but there's a certain thing. Like there's certain things. There's certain scenes that you like. You bond with the director. Where like going, all right? How do we get through this? How do we? How do we? How do you finish the day and stuff? And that was so. Like in a way, Ron Underwood and I always will have that, that episode. <laughs> 
What's funny is I didn't, I mean, I found it on Disney Plus and it says Disney at the beginning. I didn't even think of it as a kid's movie. I'm sure if, if in my brain I'd thought of it as a kid's movie, I'd be into it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of went in a little bit more with that mindset. And yeah. You definitely think, get more forgiving about it. Yeah, I guess I, I, I could see that happening because uh, some of the stuff felt on the nose. Some of the stuff, like the beginning where, like, Jill's mom is, like, singing to her and stuff and, you know, you know that there's poachers out in the jungle. I'm like, oh, her mom's going to die. <laughs> like I right. like I knew right away, like, oh, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. It's definitely, um, yeah, uh, what, the double orphaning. <laughs> so what cracked me up, I don't know if you mentioned this on the last show or if you just brought it up. I think you might have mentioned it on the last episode. You said that there's a cute part in it. Yeah. And then I was like, is he talking about the, the baby Joe? No. Oh. Because the baby Joe immediately, like, is in peril. By the way, baby <laughs> Joe played by Vern Troyer. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. I was going to say yeah. it. I'm like, it was like either a really good puppet or, or something. Yeah. It was like these these gorillas are very uh, – I was like going, oh, these are like the Congo gorillas. You know, they're that, I, they're that kind of costume animatronic thing. Yeah, I think the only it my my only issue with the gorillas is like the voices sometimes, like especially with the baby Joe, like it yeah. sounded like a, a voice actor doing it. Yeah, it sounded like a human. Yeah, totally. And so it's like, oh man, if they got the voice right, it would have sold it a lot better because it looked really good. But then, like, kind of a human voice came out. Things that like like remember like the things that stuck in my mind uh, when I sounded originally that I was like I know these parts happen was like that jingly keys thing uh-huh. and how they use it to rile them up later and stuff yeah. and I was like it's it was a cool because it, it the, the sound it makes and it kind of it it it, it creates this even I think it kind of creates a visceral thing in you too when you hear that jingle. Yeah, because you know it's bad news, and then kind of the same thing. How when Joe hears think- it, it kind of. Makes it messes them up. I think that was some of the best stuff in the movie because it was one of those things where it's like, okay, Joe can't really talk. And he knows that the bad guys are there and there's no way for him to communicate that. Um, right. So it kind of added a lot of drama. Um, yeah. They sort of figured that out a little bit easy. <laughs> later. Suspense. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. The. Um... Yeah, this opening is very sad. I wrote it this set. This is a sad opening, like the Tarzan cartoon. The, Which I haven't um, seen. The, the 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 oh, you haven't seen the Disney Tarzan? Oh oh yeah yeah that one got it. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, this is that. Yeah. It's the same kind okay. of thing. It's the it's okay. the double orphaning opening where well, like uh, both the humans and the and the gorilla, you know the 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 you know. That, and this well, probably except, came out the same I don't know, time. Only it's the opposite. I guess like I guess it's the mom that loses her kid in the Tarzan as far as the gorilla goes. But yeah. Um look something up real quick. Cause... Tarzan? A year yeah, later. It came out a year later. Yeah. Ah, interesting. So they're in yeah, production. They totally... They're in production at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you know, the fact that he says he took off my thumb and trigger finger. I like that he says trigger finger. I like how it's that it's like that. It says, Yeah, take that. Almost like a know. statement. Yeah, right. Like it was like he bit his like Joe was already smart and did it and bit him with purpose. Yeah. This uh opening reminded me of uh the flashbacks from Rampage. Oh, sure. Yeah. But I think Rampage was a little more fun. I feel like Rampage is going to age as well as this movie. I feel it's like it's going to feel dated or something. Yeah, maybe. It's know. interesting. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, it, I, I don't know. It, it's a, like, it's I mean, a, the part that sticks, like Rampage, the thing that still sticks with me at Rampage is when, um, I don't know, what's the name of that big white gorilla? George. I forget his when George, when when he starts like when the way he talks to um, the Rock, and he's like, you know, being like, ah, oh, you got scared, haha, you got scared, I oh, saved yeah, you. Oh yeah, with the sign language. And he's like, no, no, you didn't save me. I, I was fine. And he's like, no, no, I saved you. That that they're there. That 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 relationship I liked a lot. And there's another. There's a. That's another thing in this movie. There's a scene where 
uh, Joe is has the has the what's his name um, cornered. I want yeah. to say Ira and Barry from <laughs> City Slickers. Yeah. I can't think of his name. Uh, David yeah. is it David Pamer? Is that his name? No. Um. But the yeah, actor? he thinks yeah. What's that actor's name? He was I just know him from City Slickers. He's been in a million things. Character actor. Um, yeah, like the the chairman David, of David the Hamer. yeah he where he's getting you know cornered by Joe, but he's just playing hide and seek. Right, she says yeah. jump out. Say so, say so, yeah, you got. I mean, okay. So the cutest part, like the, the, the oh. part that I think is really cute, is Joe hiding the first time. Okay, where he's he's in plain sight, but he just has his face covered. Got it. Um, I just. Uh, Cause I thought you were gonna. I thought you meant like. I thought it was adorable. The baby Joe Young, but he's like immediately just being hunted. No, no, no. It's the big one. Yeah, it's it's just the big one, but he still acts like a little baby. Yeah. In some aspects. Um, I think the effects are pretty good in this movie for the most part. I think they're great. I think all the compositing of the um like the, the Joe when he's in moving and all that stuff and the way they they. They composite it into the real world, and mm-hmm. it's but, a little. I mean, there's definitely a little bit in the later stuff when he's in the city street, right? Where um, it's a little, it's a little more forced. Where you gotta go, like uh, I don't quite get how the, the gorilla does this type of damage to this car exactly, but um, I thought it was really good. I thought. I mean, the way they shot both and the way they they lit both and were able to put them together really well right. was pretty seamless. Yeah. The, there were three uh, full-size Joes made for this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they were uh, Joe, where he's like right. on all fours. Okay. Joe um, seated and Joe in what they refer to as dead position. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah, there like, was yeah, one shot. Back. There was one shot with Charlie Theron like overlooking the jungle or something, and she's like, yeah. she's like touching Joe's arm and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. that can't be CG completely because no. she's really yeah. touching it. So it was probably they like, did the the puppet Joe and maybe did some CG overlay for his movement. But yeah, it felt like she was really grabbing his arm. And, yeah, um, I think the three full size Joes had animatronic faces or heads yeah. um maybe not the dead one i don't know <laughs> oh no the dead one moves the dead one i think moves at the end yeah uh, when he when he gets up again he's not dead right um, i noticed two actors that appeared in lost holy crap uh naveen yeah i forgot i i, I don't know he was it I, I didn't know who he was back when i saw it yeah and naveen shows up by the way this is shot at cool little ranch okay which is on Oahu, right? Uh, it's, it's the like very Jurassic Park and uh, yeah, it's the classic Godzilla. place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on Lost, uh, there was like, when we drove the van through it when we first got the van started, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so one, it was that I was like, oh, cool little ranch, and seeing Naveen there, and then there's like the shaking of the trees, right? And I was just kind of like thinking about how, okay, so this happened before Lost. So it could have been like during Lost, you'd be like, hey, have you ever seen something like that? He's like, once. <laughs> and then I noticed Marguerite Moreau in the, yeah, as Cabriolet in the girl. car. Yeah. Right. She's one of the Cabriolet girls. Yeah. So I thought, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a note here. And maybe you noticed this too. I said that Charlize Theron always walks with purpose. Uh, <laughs> okay. I didn't notice that, but I, I my note was, <laughs> is that how she eats an orange? <laughs> I could. Was it an orange? It appears. It looked like an orange. Well, when you see when the when you the, when she takes a bite into it, it uh-huh. looks like an orange. And then on the other side, it looks like it's a half maybe. A, an orange that's halfway eaten, but it, as if it was eaten like an apple. Right. Like, and I didn't I, know if they were trying to make an orange I, look more exotic than it was. I thought it, at, so when I saw her holding it, it looked like it was fake. Or it looked like there was something wrong with the editing. 
because it was like oh, a perfectly def- it was a perfectly round thing and then right. when they when they cut to the other side it was like half eaten and i'm like wait how did she eat that and then she took another bite out of that same side and i'm like oh she's eating like i don't know i couldn't figure it out either i didn't know what it was yeah, like she's just sucking on the orange, but it looked like she took the first bite from the one end. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a study on it and post a post like an Instagram video to see if people can figure out what's happening. It came out like I think I think it's listed in IMDb as one of the goofs that she she starts and she starts eating a fruit and when it cuts to the other side, it's already halfway eaten. Maybe she has perfect teeth or big bites because <laughs> it looked like it was cut in half or. Wait, no. It looked like a big ass bite. I don't know. Um, I, like, I watched it a couple days ago, but I remember it being weird. So <laughs> they refer to Joe as a two thousand pound gorilla. Yeah. So then I had to kind of look it up because, like, I remember there was, you know, there's like there's a classic old joke about like where does an eight hundred pound gorilla sit. Uh-huh. You, you remember you know that joke. I don't know. Is it its ass? <laughs> no. Oh. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, like it's joke? like a joke that's like it's like a joke that's like as old as like why did the chicken cross the road? Oh. It's like where does an eight hundred pound gorilla sit? And the answer is anywhere he wants to. Okay. I like mine better. Uh <laughs> yeah, no, it is better. <laughs> Uh, I joke is older that that the yeah. sensibility for it wasn't was the audience for it wasn't quite ready for his ass. Yeah. Uh, however, so then I was like, because to me I was like, well, wait a minute. If a gorilla is eight hundred pounds, two thousand pounds doesn't seem like that much bigger, and Joe is considerably bigger. Right. So then I looked it up, and it turns out gorillas actually tend to be about three hundred and thirty pounds. Got it. Around so yeah, around three hundred pounds. So I guess a two thousand pound is pretty big. Yeah. And you know, and there's no such thing as an 800 pound gorilla. And if you were to see, if you were to see a 2,000 pound gorilla, you would get a dolly counter zoom because there's like four or yeah. five of them. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, which and there's a yeah, and then at, yeah, the hide and seek thing, and they go, "Good thing Joe didn't want to play doctor." And I was like, I, "Uh, come on, you're in a Disney movie. What are you saying?" This that seems like a Bill Paxton line that he just made up on the set. Threw in himself. Yeah. It doesn't really make any sense. I mean, yeah. I guess it does. He is playing a game, but I think it's I don't know. It's kind of funny. That's the that's one of those jokes for the adults who took their kids to see it. Uh so the fingerless the fingerless hand. Yeah was kind of hilarious that was cool that looked good (laughs) oh yeah there was the the far shot where you could kind of tell it wasn't a real hand but uh the the one where you're just seeing like the skin and you're trying to see where where the finger ended and you know because like there's like the it's a smooth thing like like it kind of he it was a good bite. Like it was clean. Like he took it off. Yeah. Like a full thing. I think it, the the glove system looks pretty cool. Yeah. It adds good menace to that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a scene at the party. Yes. Where they cut away. Yeah. To a couple. Yes. Uh, presumably married. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of that? Uh, Ray Ray Harryhausen and Terry Moore. Right. It, it was like, well, it was great because we were watching it. Becky was watching it with me. And right. and she was like, uh, what was that? Because <laughs> it is so, it's very, it's, very it's a very shoehorned in moment. Right. And she's like, what? Who, what, what is that about? And I was like, well, that's uh, <laughs> Terry Moore and Ray Harryhausen. So it's, it's, it's a, I think it's, it's a forced cameo. I feel like it's weird because does Ray Harryhausen get more lines than Terry Moore? It, uh, it's the same. Okay. The same amount. I guess so. It's she reminds me of somebody, and he says you when we first met. <laughs> um the 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 rampage scene in Los Angeles. Yeah. Every time they would cut to somebody in a car 
or someone getting yep. out of a car or someone looking at Joe. It felt like it was supposed to be a cameo, and I don't know if it was or not, but it it was shot in a way where I felt like those people were a little more than just like kind of like they felt featured. Yeah. Uh, the, I hear you. It was a I, weird I vibe. I didn't. Yeah. The way what <laughs> for me, it just felt like every car, every, every person on the street moment, every reaction that was on the street for me just felt like this was a time capsule of what Disney understood was the current way people talk and things going on <laughs> in the world because it felt like <sighs> okay so there's <laughs> there's the african-american guy right who's staring at my joe young got it and he says oh my god and he says fat <laughs> that's that's right it's so your grandpa's type of hip speak kind right. of thing like that there's a lot of things like that just kind of felt like uh because this was going on right now in the world you know where or, you know it's like or like when the guy when they carjack the guy and he's like this is like the sixth time the seven meters a month or whatever he has that line uh-huh that he like apparently that guy gets carjacked a lot i feel like even the the car alarm going off and joe destroying the car until it stops very much it's like very a total much commentary a because I remember, like, in high school, roughly around this time, like, that was a big deal. Annoying car alarms. The one that did, like, Yeah, the, that one that does sound. a whole bunch of different ones. Yeah. yeah. It, and, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. The, the whole thought of that car alarm. Because it was, like, a thing where car alarms were starting to get ignored. Right. I think. Because, like, they do, they were doing stuff on TV. Like, here, look, this car alarm. Now, look, no one does anything about it because they're just. They're, they're just noise makers now. And so I think that's why they devised the other car alarm that will make a bunch of different noises to get people's attention. And now that's become the most annoying one. Yeah. The, they, yeah. So the guy in the car who's like, come on. He's like, you've never seen an accident before? And then <laughs> Joe like runs over top of him and the guy really freaks out. He yes. screams. And then Joe looks through his back window. He looks at the guy and shakes his head and moves on. Oh, yeah. Like he's, yeah. Yeah. Joe calling him a pussy or something. Yeah. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird movie. But yeah, like later on, Richard Real shows up. And uh, like, I like, I know that guy. Real? Is it Real or Ryle? Real Richard? I don't know. Uh, I before eat usually is pronounced real as far as if it's if it's yeah. based on german yeah so when i when he showed up i'm like okay so maybe the all those other people in the other cars were i should have somebody of, yeah uh, but no know. not really and i think the uh, marguerite uh, moreau uh thing kind of threw me off too but this is like before like wet hot american summer and stuff so maybe right before oh i don't, I don't, I don't know yeah so yeah i got to thinking that but I guess there weren't anybody. Well, like when we cut to the carnival and they go into the right. carnival. <laughs> because they because they realize that Joe ch- thinks it's the flashlight. Right. It's Yeah. yeah. It's, sure. Okay. I'll go along yeah, with that. Was, yeah, that was, ooh, that was a big stretch. Yeah. But um, but just kind of like, like kind of coming in the carnival and being like going, all right, this, is, this looks like there's definitely some stuff to – destroy here that's what i when i was like there's like this is gonna like they have a whole big establishing shot of the carnival where you're like going all right okay you can break that looks like we got some stuff to break in here when he goes by the shooting gallery i'm like oh this is going to be a commentary on you know joe doesn't like weapons we know that but it was mostly the joke that the people in the shooting gallery had headsets on or like no, like noise muffler things the the yeah yeah and so they couldn't hear it. They couldn't hear yeah, the stuff going on. It was, yeah. I was like, okay, this, this is, this is like, there's like, whatever. Even if it's BB guns, but it's live ammunition in the shooting gallery. I guess. And the and guy's just standing to... there. The guy just standing there on the side, and letting people shooting guns. And he's like on the other side of the counter, just on the side of all those targets. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, definitely. Because like they show the gorilla with the target on it, and it's like, oh. Is he going to get upset? 
You keep waiting for that. Uh, I am so low on notes. <laughs> okay, and so then we end with uh, the big fire rescue. It's the equivalent of the orphanage, only he saves one kid. Right. And well, he or- climbs a Ferris wheel to do it. <laughs> and it's not a baby like the last movie. The weird, like, the, the stop-motion crawling baby. Right. And this kid... So, he... Yeah, go ahead. This kid got left on the Ferris wheel... Even though the the carnival dude said that it was all clear. Yeah. So, so I don't know how he missed this kid. I don't know. He let people off, skipped the kids, and then let some more people off. Right. But anyways, we had to set that up so he can <laughs> climb there and save them. And, yeah. And the whole thing comes tumbling down. Now, uh, he basically puts his hand out and the kid climbs into it. Right. So. Giant puppet hand. Do you think you would climb into a giant gorilla's hand? Uh, given the situation, sure. I, what, I else, hope what, good... what other option do you have? Yeah, you look at his look at his face. And be like, eh. it, I mean, the the Ferris wheel's on fire. Yeah, and if I see a giant ape see me and then jump up there, I mean, yeah, sure, yeah, I'd do it. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I, uh... <laughs> I'd be afraid. One of getting thing crushed. I was wondering, because I, I did kind of for a second wonder if the kid was the same kid in the car or not. Huh. Because you remember, there's also the kid in the car, right? Who is, uh, you know, he he like waves at Joe, and he has big fingers stick out of that little hole, and he kind of waves back. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure either. Uh, but Joe sacrifices himself. He as the as the first wheel's falling, he jumps off and lands on his back, yeah, uh, protecting the kid. And that's when Joe is dead, presumed dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he's not. And everyone's because... bad about him. Yeah, I was like, <clears throat> Steve was like, "Is he gonna die?" I said, "No, he's not gonna die. It's it's like a Disney movie." Like, <laughs> and then he like was kind of laying there for a while, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, when's the hand gonna move? Because we know that's gonna be. What's going to happen? Yeah, I had forgotten. Like, I had forgotten whether he lived or died. <laughs> right. In this version of the movie. And because I had uh, already kind of was flipping through uh, trivia and stuff, and they talked about the three different full size, and one of them was listed as dead position, I was like, <laughs> oh, he dies. Spoiler alert. Oh, he dies. Okay. So I was accepting him dying, and then they bring him back to life. Right. And then they do uh, crowdsourcing. They do crowdsourcing yes. for Joe. Yeah, just just that group right there in the carnival, and they managed to uh, collect enough money to um, buy a a game a reserve that that Joe can live the rest of his days. But didn't the newsman show up to? So it was on the news, maybe. Okay. I think that I think we I think that that's what happened. Maybe that started like a grassroots campaign because yeah. that news guy was there. It's good because it started at eleven bucks. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and you're like going, oh, I guess, I guess they got enough money. The kids, so cotton candy change. Yeah, uh, it was okay. It wasn't great. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I love Bill Paxton. Yeah, and uh, I like Charlize Theron. Uh, uh, yeah, it was fine. Yeah, there wasn't nuance, nuanced dialogue uh, in I, it. I kind of appreciate that it wasn't just a straight up remake. Yes. But then part of me wants to see this Joe holding up the piano. On yeah, the there was no. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't uh, throw lions at a table. Well, or I noticed like that. that. I noticed that there were some tigers and lion stuffed animals at the carnival. It would have been a nice kind of homage if he, when he was breaking through the things, if he grabbed like a couple of lion. Stuff the animals he ripped- toss them out of the way. <laughs> but yeah, but, it, was, like, it was pretty good when he opens up the cage that the they had caught that uh, that cheetah or leopard in it. Oh yeah, he, he ripped he ripped up the top and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah, just the small things. And I was hoping that Naveen Andrew would Andrews would show back up. Like he's changed his ways. Yeah, because he kind of didn't show up in the last act. He it was it was the right. the main bad guy, and then the other right dude. after he yeah after he tips him off just on the phone. That's kind of the end of his bit. Yeah. 
but I mean, I, I'm glad I watched it. It's, it's a movie I'd never seen before. And it's like, I don't know, like 21 years old. Yeah. It's so, all right. Yeah. Um, okay. So my question for you is, okay. All right. If you have your choice, it's three full size Joe's. There okay. is him on all fours. Okay. Him sitting or him laying on his back in dead position. Uh, sitting. Now, they can all be converted into beds. <laughs> okay. Because I was just thinking. Basically, cause cause sit- like there's it goes, sitting to do to lay in his lap. Yeah. you you As soon as you started asking the questions, you said there's three Joes. It was, which one do you want? And I yeah. was like, well, the dead one's kind of morbid. But it would be that nice to cuddle morbid, up to. But it makes an, the dead one does make a nice bed because it's already kind of bed shaped. Yeah, but his uh, but the, like his the sitting is his leg are his legs the, crossed, like crisscross. Yeah, I think, I think it's kind of crossed. It, you could sit in that, right? <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, yeah, oh, you don't know what Chris, be crossed. You don't know what crisscross applesauce is? No, it's a replacement for the other way we used to call it, sitting that way. Oh. Really? Yeah, I I think I think it's more of a kids thing. I don't think adults really say crisscross applesauce. I, I say I say because that actually happened. It actually <laughs> came up in, at one point. Oh, when when I was doing the Lost concert that we did in 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 Dublin. Oh, that's available uh, on I LP. Was, did you get the LP? No, I think they're sending me something. Okay. And uh, are you wait? Are you on it? Do, I don't they, know. Are you reading something? I think I'm probably on it somewhere. But okay. uh, anyways, they uh, – I, what I'm reading, I'm reading the scene. I'm reading the scene description and they had like – they had like the old way written there. Uh-huh. And I was like, hey, we're going to – I'm going to change this to cross-legged. <laughs> and, uh, and then they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. Good catch. <laughs> it's funny. I mean it's not – I don't know. It's – Yeah. We're, we're making it out to like it's way more offensive sounding than it is, but no, but it's just like it's <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. It's just now, now yeah, this is how it just is. yeah, it, I get it. And so yeah, it's 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 and it's we're we're better for it, you know. It's just yeah. better to just have gotten there. So, um, anyways, <laughs> so that one, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you could like kind of like make like I was like you, you kind of like uh, like it's almost like a hammock shape in his lap. Yeah, because it would be like a beanbag chair lap. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. But climbing up on him on all fours where you can you can kind of like lay on his back, like facing up looking at the stars. Yeah, yeah. Or you can maybe depending on how wide he is, like almost like sit on him like a horse. As if you were riding a giant gorilla, and I might have to go with that. Okay, I'm still. I'm gonna stick with sitting. Okay. So the it's dead, the dead positions you know, up for grabs. Uh, there is. Uh, there were our. We, we, I mean, we've we've exchanged pictures of those King Kong hand chairs, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There needs to be like a really good one though, like taken from original molds. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That you mount on the wall. You got to like climb up on it. Yeah, but you can still lay in it. Yeah, it's big enough to yeah. land, but you got to like, you need like a little stool to step up on it. Because <laughs> it could want to keep it above ground. It's, yeah. yeah. It's uh, like a shower seat. It's like going under the waterfall. <laughs> oh, we got to get to that. We got to get to that one. Which one? We got to get to that 70s Kong suit. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That's- yeah, I, I've seen that one before, and the only thing I remember is that Jessica Lang is stunning. <laughs> That's all I remember. Um, I don't okay. like the noises you made in between saying stunning. Sorry, I was like, I was like popping my knuckles and stuff. I'll cut that part out. The noise. I'm ready yeah. to talk about next episode. Oh, we didn't mention top five, but let's do it. Okay, you're gonna. No, there's no chance. <laughs> Okay, next episode. It's our anniversary episode, and we're going to do it. We're finally going to do it. We're going to talk about Godzilla 1998. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah. This movie was 98. This was movie was... My Joe Young was December 98. Godzilla was like May of 98 or something like that. So. 
These both came out the same year. Ooh, I have something to say about that for sure. Okay. So be sure to listen to that one? episode. Oh, yeah. You're going to save it? Yeah. I'm going to save it. There's something I've been Go wanting ahead. to tell you since I watched Godzilla. And, uh, okay. And uh, I'll bring it up on the next show. Okay. Uh, until then, go to kaijupod.com. You can check out our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, people love the YouTube. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, uh, so I guess leave your comments below. <laughs> I guess in YouTube, if you're listening on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, um, until next time, I'm going to go chat with uh, Ray Harryhausen and Terry Moore. I'm going to go play hide and seek (laughs) with David Pamer or with Joe in the woods. (laughs) Okay. I'll lure you out with my flashlight, a gigantic flashlight. Oh, did I, Oh, did I, did I tell you about, uh, the first golden globes I went to and I met Charlie Theron there. Oh no, no. It was it was it was like the first year Lost was on, and um, uh, whoever they had invited to the Golden Globes, it kind of ended up. I know I wasn't the first person that was just to go, but it ended up going to me at some point. And mm-hmm. this was like, and J.J. Abrams and his wife were so great. First of all, J.J.'s like, listen, I only want this to be great for Ori, so I'm going to buy him his tuxedo because I, I didn't have a tuxedo or anything like that. And I was all like, right. shoot, I need to, as soon as I found out I was going. So he he had the, the, there was like a guy, he came, he measured me, he made me a tuxedo, came back, put it on, fit me, did, went back, did some alterations, came in, so then I had a tuxedo. So a tuxedo was made in like two days or one day or something for me to go to the Golden Globes. And then we're at the Golden Globes. And our table was kind of catty corner, like like at a, a diagonally away from a table that had the people from. Um, there was that Peter Sellers. It was uh, that movie that was about Peter Sellers. That uh, um, what was it called? Um, but uh, Charlie Theron was in it, and. Um, by the way, some people say Theron. I don't know what, but uh, anyways, uh, JJ's wife turns to me during the Golden Globes at one point, and she says, uh, "The great thing about the Golden Globes is you can talk to anybody. So, who are you going to talk to?" And I was like, uh, "I don't know," but. I mean, uh, basically, it's like, I don't know, but I've been staring at Charlie Theron's back, like, <laughs> almost the whole night. So she's like, you should go, you should go introduce yourself. And uh, and she was the nicest person mm-hmm. ever. Uh, and it was great, because if if uh, Katie hadn't prodded me to go and do that, I wouldn't have had the confidence to then, after that, after that, uh, I went up like I, I shook Scorsese's hand when I walked past him. Like it was like, I was it was like I, I was like going awesome. I can say hi to everybody now. Yeah. And so that was really really cool, and I'm grateful for it. It's cool. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like her a whole bunch. Um, <laughs> did she walk with purpose? She was sitting. I just kind of. Okay. She was still sitting at the table when I went over and I said hi, and she was great. She asked like I was like hi, and she she I was saying I'm here with a show called Lost. She asked me about Lost and blah blah blah. It was like really really cool. Yeah.